I am sure that many of us here tonight can confess that Jesus is more than wonderful to us. Amen? We have received these blessings day after day. We are in the land of living. We may have no age and pain, but thank God we are alive. And we are alive in Jesus' name. Tonight is the first of the night, which means that Friday night will be our last night. Tomorrow is our rest night. So I'm calling you to every one of us, please, let us bring up someone on Friday night. Bring a family member, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring anyone, so that you can enjoy the last night of this revival. And don't forget, Sabbath, when you invite them, invite them for Sabbath as well. Alright? So let us invite a friend, invite someone to be here on Friday night, and also on Sabbath, so that we can enjoy the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
bring the plans of the enemy to mind. And as a result, our souls are broken. We pray that where he is at the hospital bed at this moment, Lord, that you will send your holy angels that excel in might to encounter on you. O oh God, to guide the hands of the nurses and the doctors, so that as they minister to him, O oh Father, you will minister healing in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to strengthen him, rejuvenate his body, and bring him back to perfect health. We are looking forward to when you will have Return to us, O oh Lord, that you will have a double portion of your Holy Spirit. So bless this family. It's a very critical time when they need our prayers. We lift them up before you. Take all of us into your hands. message 
Uh, tonight's message is really a follow-up from last night's message. You see, the more time you are given mm -hmm. is the more accountability you will have to give to God. That's right. And it is critical to understand that no opportunity passed by will be passed unnoticed by the throne of grace. That's right, that's right. So tonight we will delve in the word of God. We will look at, at slide number three. Read some scriptures tonight. The shouts of the king made a great feast to the thousand of his Lord yes. and drank wine before the thousand. Yes. The shouted, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Next slide. Right. Go back to the previous slide. Nice. Uh, Brethren, Babylon was one of the most powerful nations ever ruled on the face of the earth. Yes, sir. Babylon was a very fortified city. Its walls were so huge and wide that two chariots could have passed by comfortably on its walls. It is said that Babylon could not have been overthrown. Hence the reason why uh, Nebuchadnezzar beat his chest and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built? Right. Because of the structure and its apparent infallibility, the leaders took it for granted that they will rule forever. Right. And they decided that they are not going to pay homage to God. So Belshazzar, who was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, was now ruling on the throne. And the Bible says in verse 1, uh, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. Not only that he made a great feast to the thousand of his lords, but he did something. You see, he decided to engage in something they call reveling. And so while he was tasting the wine, he ordered for some uh, vessels that were taken from the house of God. Right. Yes, must bring to your attention that whatsoever vessel came from the house of God, wherever it is, it's holy vessel. Yeah. 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 Wherever it may be, it's holy vessel. Yeah. And the problem with Belshazzar is that he was not ignorant of the fact that the vessels were holy. Yeah. Yeah. He was not ignorant, but persistence in evil leads to greater evil until it comes to the point where we have come, where the Holy Spirit could no longer reach him. What a terrible state to be in. Bible says that they brought the vessels that were taken from the temple of the house of God, which was Jerusalem, and the king, his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Next. 
friends and fellow believers. Verse 2 has a very important point for us. It says, while he tasted the wine. Yeah. You see, fellow believers, I am convinced that the wine he drank was alcoholic beverages. And I'll tell you why. It was while he was testing the wine, he made the decision. The Bible says that wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. The scripture tells us that when we consume alcohol, it affects our judgment. That's right. That's right. Then the charge was there in his drinking his alcohol and under the influence of the alcohol he made a stupid decision. He called for those vessels that were holy. See these vessels, these holy vessels that Nebuchadnezzar respected even though they were vessels of his, even though they were not that vessels of his own God. God. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Nebuchadnezzar was a smart king. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was kind and respectful enough of someone else's religion. He did not use the vessels but had them in storage as part of his bed. Vessels of the most eyes. Next slide. Verse 3 points out that sin produces irreverence when you get involved. Oh, you need to follow it tonight. Take your time. Take your time. The, the, the statement is saying that sin produces irreverence yes. when you get involved. Yes. You see, what was once sacred about the Sabbath seems to be no longer sacred when we continue to mingle in sin and transgression. start getting into sin and battling with it uh, what was sin no longer appears to be sinful terrible state to me fellow believers what was once sacred about marriage seems to no longer be sacred anymore hey marriage one of the greatest and best institutions that God has ever given to mankind. Amen. Amen. One of the best gifts came coming out from the Garden of Eden and God gave marriage as a blessing and whenever the world look at a married couple, they should see the very image of God. Amen. They should see God's character transcending out of a marriage life. But it seems to me that Satan has corrupted marriage in such a way that hey, even men consider to be married with men and the states and kings of this world are upholding and giving them rights. It is as terrible as our world could have come. What about God's sacred talents. And these are just the list of a few of them. 
You see, friends of mine, the text says that when we sin, we become very irreverent. I can tell you that some people in the sins they become very bold. You follow me? They become very bold. I've noticed a very new trend that I would like to bring to your attention. A lot of individuals who have been faithful to God have decided to depart from the strict principles of God's word in relation to uh, types and, and so many important principles that God expects of us. What they are doing, uh, they are being bold in criticizing and trying to lead others to disobey God. Hey, let me point to your attention that 